Hello, welcome to another episode of This, That, and the Other. Lately, the videos that I have been doing, I do have a list of shows to do in the future, but lately, ideas have come to mind. Sometimes, five minutes ago, for example. One of the things I wanted to talk about which I don't believe I have talked much about, or if if at all, was a show that used to be on this area called the the Don and Mike Show. I'm sure you know some of you out there know what I'm talking about. Other others would not, but it, it was a it was a local D, DC show. Um, you could hear it in like Maryland, North Virginia, Northern Virginia. D.C., that DM, the DM, DMV area, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. It was a star Don Geronimo, M Michael Mara, and they had, they had different news people um, for many years. And at the end of Don and Mike's show was Buzz Burbank. And they had a the guy, Rob, Rob A., who was on on the show quite a bit. They had they had various producers. They had um, various traffic women that did did the traffic that would would, would um, sit in the studio with them too. And, and um, one of, one of them was, was Sherry Licker, I remember. And then I think af actually after Sherry, the traffic came from a reports came from a different a different different company, and they would just be. Um, fed into the Don and Mike show during like commercial breaks. But anyway, I started listening to Don and Mike when they were on WAVA, and it was actually towards the end of their, their tenure with WAVA. They had been on there for several years before I started listening, but I, I started listening to their show in 1991. It was on from like, I think. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. if I'm not mistaken and I just turned I did a little bit little uh, a few shows here here and there and then the WAVA's changed formats became a Christian radio station and if you know Don and Mike that Christian radio station would not would not want them they probably probably would not not have wanted to have been on a Christian radio station as well and so there was a hiatus for a while. They, you did you didn't hear Don and Mike, and then they signed a contract with WJFK, and we're on in, in the afternoons from let's say two to two to seven, something like that. Anyway, I used to I used to listen them to them quite a bit coming home from work or on the way to work. So. I, Time, my type of job, I uh, it, my shifts rotated, but anyway, I I really I really used to I used to enjoy listening to that to to Don and Mike, and I am um, I'm trying on my shows to more more or less not be pausing and and reading things off the internet from articles or anything like that. I'm trying. I'm trying to be more off the cuff when I talk, and this this one this this whole this whole thing is is off the cuff. I am trying to get to the point where I can do some research before I start talking, and, and um, kind of store into my mind um, information and some of the things I may like years or something like that. I may have to just write down on a piece of paper and just kind of look glance down at to. You know, give information on it. If it's history of something, and a show is basically about preserving history. And one of the things that um, I remember from Don and Mike was um, Don. Don is a family man, and his, his wife Frida would he would be calling his wife Frida at home a lot, and she'd be on the show. And he had a son Bart, and hear his, hear his son talk too, all the way from his little kid all the way to his college years and you know, Mike, Michael Mara 
later on got married and had a couple of little girls and I think he's gotten married again now and has a son. He he has another show now that's on um I guess internet radio. I have heard a little bit of it. I don't I don't listen to that on a on a regular basis. But um Mike was very talented at doing various voices, um, voices of, of many different celebrities like Larry King, for one. He had a a character that he did on the show, Charlie Stewing Stablack, that was supposed to be a man that was about six foot seven, wore all, overalls all the time. He shaved his head. <laughs> he had this he had this real high high pitched voice. It sounded kind of like. Curly on the Three Stooges, kind of kind of similar to that, I, I suppose. But Charlie was kind of a kind of almost like a, an adult that just had never had never grown up. He he was he, he still he uh, he liked watching his shows Barney and <laughs> he act, he acted more like a like a like a like a five year five year old boy than a than a grown man. <laughs> but, um, I, I remember that. I remember that voice used to used to crack me up when I when I'd hear it, and oh, the, and there no, you'd always hear a door opening and closing when 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 Charlie came in. You'd hear that sound effect too when Charlie was leaving. He he demanded that that, but that was one of Michael Mara's characters, and he and he had he had many. Um, Don and Mike also um, would do a thing where the station would want them to do interviews with different people. And sometimes these interviews were not interviews that Don and Mike really wanted to be associated with. So they would, they came up with alter ego characters and would pretend to be doing a, a different type of, um, of, um, talk show. They, one that comes to mind was a thing called Jew to Jew. Don had a character called Dr. Michael Golds or Doctor Donald Goldstein and Michael Mara was was um, Michael Goodman, attorney at law, and supposed to be a couple of Jewish men and would bicker with with each other and they they would they would do an interview and they they uh, they'd have the person on the other end thinking they they were dealing with a a doctor a doctor and a lawyer, which I thought was pretty funny. They had another uh, one towards the end of, of of the time they were on the air. It's called it was raining food, where they're supposed to be supposed to be. Uh, two men that were like over over four hundred four hundred pounds uh, doing doing a show and, and they, they it was kind of like same format they'd be interviewing people and and they talk about being hungry hungry all the time and couldn't wait to to get something else to eat I re I remember that but they had a they had a bit too called um, low budget Jeopardy where they they did questions kind of like kind of like this sh show Jeopardy it was an answer to form of a question and. Don would, would would host it, and Michael Mara would do one of those one of those um, personalities, Larry King or Harry Carey, or uh, he he had he had a he had a number of them. Uh, getting close to Christmas, he would do Santa Claus, which was was funny. But they would, have, but two people would call in, and and um, Don would do. There would be categories, and Don would they'd ask the questions, and they, it was it was for like small amounts of money that you'd you win. You win like maybe like ten dollars or something. A winner. It, was, it it wasn't it wasn't anything like what you'd win on on tele, on a television game show Jeopardy. But that was, it was called low budget Jeopardy. And they had a another bit called strip trivia where they they'd get probably like four girls, four guys, and they'd ask them questions and. Each each contestant would have five, I think, five articles of clothing on. Every time they got an answer wrong, they'd have to take off a, an article of clothing, and the last person that had any kind of article of clothing remaining would would, would win the game. That was basically what strip strip trivia was. And I'm trying to think of some of the other other things that they did. Of course, they they would. They would try to call celebrities all the time, and uh, once in a while they they they'd have some successful calls. A lot of times they, they weren't able, they weren't able to reach them, or they or if they did reach them, they'd get hung up on. I, re I remember that. Um, 
they had one. They had a they had a bit called Underwear of the Rich and Famous where they try to get a celebrity to ask them what kind of underwear they were they were wearing. And oh gosh, I remember one. They called called one and he 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 hung up on him and that's it was interest it was an interesting show show to listen to it it was it it stayed on the afternoons on WJFK and it, it was on um they you had um also on that on that station early in the morning you had Howard Stern and you had G Gordon Liddy and then you had you had Don and Mike and I believe for the while they had um the Grease Man for he he'd come to WJFK for a while but but Don and Mike's show was syndicated all over the country later on. It was it was it was um it was listened to listened to all over the place. You could you could hear that show. Uh, different stations pick pick the show up. Later on, uh maybe a couple, a year year or two before they they find the show finally just went went off. Don's wife was Frida was killed in an auto accident and Ocean City, Maryland, when they were on a on a vacation, and after that happened, he, I don't think he was really into doing the show as much in, anymore. And just and it just it kind of went it kind of went downhill after after that. I at least at least at least in my opinion it did, and probably other other opinions as well. People that you know that what that listen to that show, but I thought I thought the show. All in all, it was it was it was funny. I I enjoyed listening to it. I a lot of a lot of people would disagree with me on that. With a lot, of, I, I knew quite a few people that dis, despised the show. But but um, Don, I remember Don Don too was a big um, football fan. Michael Mara was a big hockey fan. I, I remember that. Mike, I believe, had um, season tickets to the Capitals games and. He actually owned a restaurant in Manassas for a while as well. I I don't I I think it was O'Mara's maybe. I I don't know. I I never I never went to it, but I I do remember hearing about it. I think he I think he eventually got out of it. It was just a it was a difficult. He talked about how difficult the re, re, um, restaurant business was to succeed in, and yeah, I've I see that. I've seen quite a lot of restaurants open. Than close, so yeah, I can, I, I, I can, I can see that being a, a tough business to succeed in. But I have a lot of a lot of other memories of that of that show, Don, Don and Mike, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of you listeners out there that um, listen used to listen to the show. Maybe not, maybe not even not even people that lived in the D.C. area. People that listen to it from other parts of the country um, enjoy. Enjoyed that show as well, but that, those are just some memories I have of the Don and Mike show. I'm sure other people will um, let me know other memories they have as have as well that I just that I, that I didn't mention. I'm just, like I said, this is off the cuff, so I'm just I'm just um, thinking of what what I what I can recall recollect of the show off the top of my head. And with that being said. Like like I've said before, each time and I'm looking for ideas on shows to do in the future, especially about preserving history, obscure aspects of history. And with that being said, like, subscribe, share. As always, thanks for watching.